Well, hello, friends. I know, it's been forever since I've done a book review. I mean, like, a week and a half, but still, forever, right? I'm usually pretty good to you guys. Like, if you have a suggestion for me to read and review, I usually write it down and read them. Though there are exceptions. Like, confession time, whenever anyone asks me to read books like Pretty Little Liars or anything with the word vampire in the title, I kind of just pretend like I never saw your comment. Let me just get that out there right now. And I know that's kind of mean. I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest with you. I'll probably never read anything like that. Ever. Because while they say don't judge a book by its cover, I usually have a pretty good sense of whether or not I'm going to enjoy something or not. Pretty Little Liars is a no. One of the books that I avoided forever was Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. But so many people asked me to review it that I finally broke down, took a day to lay out by the pool, and read it. What really kept me from reading it was a Amazon review saying that it was just like Twilight. It was a copycat of Twilight. I hate Twilight copycats. Any kind of copycats. You know books that get sold just because they have something to do with whichever franchise is the biggest at the moment. Vampires, zombies, werewolves, dystopian novels. You get the picture. I read Hush Hush and Crescendo in about two days time, and here's what I thought. So I'll say it again. My main problem with Hush Hush was people were comparing it too much to Twilight, and I tend to avoid books that are major copycats of a giant franchise. But when I sat down and brought myself to read it, I found myself asking, what the heck are you talking about? It's my fault, really. I never should trust Amazon reviewers. They're usually very, very stupid. I literally found myself searching for similarities because everyone said that they were there. This is a highly scientific and totally not just drawn out Venn diagram that I made for Hush Hush and Twilight. It seems to me that the only similarity that there was was that, bing bing bing, Patch and Nor were biology partners. A clear ripoff of the Twilight series. So for those of you who have been comparing it to Twilight, I don't know where you got that idea or what you're talking about. I mean, these days it looks like everything gets compared to Twilight, so I guess you can't really avoid it. But of a lot of YA fiction books I've read, this one is probably the farthest from it. Anyways, anyways, pros and cons of the first and second book. Hush Hush was actually pretty good. Much better than I thought it would be. It draws you in, it's exciting, you want to know what happens next. While the characters had faults, like characters normally do, I found them likable and, you know, generally relatable. Norgrade definitely isn't the worst YA fiction character that I've read about. I mean, she makes some awful decisions, but she's pretty likable too. Anyways, it's fast-paced, it's exciting, and it's well-written. Those are three crucial things that have to exist in a book in order for me to like it. Hush Hush was simply likable. It wasn't exactly the most rememberable book that I've ever read, but I didn't hate its guts, so, you know, that's something. Really, the only cons of Hush Hush were I hate Patch's name. Every time I read it, I feel like I'm reading about a dog. And the big twist, the big villain. Maybe this is just a recurring theme in my life, but is it just me or was that really obvious? No. It was the guy who's always missing at crucial parts of the book where people almost get hurt. The guy who doesn't say anything and disappears at really suspicious times. Are you sure? My real problem lies with Crescendo. After I read Hush Hush, I was really excited to see where Patch and Nora's relationship goes. I'll tell you where it goes. <sighs> Down the toilet. It doesn't even last for a full chapter. Which brings me to this question. Becca Fitzpatrick, I have to ask you. Did a bunch of YA authors all gather around one day and decide, All right guys, look. Here's what I think we should do. We should have a really great first book. You know, the kind that makes everybody interested and ready for the second one. But then, oh, but then, to really get the reader going, I was thinking we could totally trash the storyline. You know, make the characters all unlikable, bore the reader to death with long paragraphs about the meaning of life and love. 
Stuff like that. We should have the main couple break up and the lead character act totally out of character, add on about a billion awful life decisions, and all together as a percentage, I'm thinking 90% romance, 10% subpar interesting action. What do you guys think? What is it with YA authors? This has happened with almost every second book in a YA series that I've ever read. I'm not a huge romantic, but geez, can the couple stay together for more than a month before something atrocious happens? Anyways, what bugged me the most about Crescendo was Nora. She was actually pretty cool in Hush Hush, but she was just straight up stupid in Crescendo. I mean, seriously, there's jumping to conclusions, and then there is jumping to conclusions way before you even have a reason to jump to a conclusion. If she were one of my friends here in the flesh, I would have just slapped her and told her to snap out of it. Also, her best friend V, who is usually awesome, I mean, I loved her in Hush Hush, was so annoying in Crescendo. I would have slapped her even harder. And then there's Patch. Oh, Patch. Patch, you and Lena from Beautiful Creatures would get along swimmingly. I can't tell you. You won't understand. I have so much inner turmoil. If I knew a really good therapist, I'd recommend therapy to Patch, Jace, Waylon, and Lena. Easy. The only thing I kinda liked about Crescendo was the twist ending was actually a twist. Though I'm not gonna lie, it didn't seem like Becca Fitzpatrick really thought it through. Like, the reasons Rickson gave Nora for doing the things he did seemed oddly patched together and didn't make a lot of sense. I said this so you would think this because I know reverse psychology very well and I knew without a doubt that you would think this. Well, if that's the case, Rickson sure took a lot of risks. But I guess the ending was pretty good. Also kind of unbelievable. I know we've hated each other for months and I thought you were cheating on me, but now I love you. Take me back. The very, very ending though was very exciting. I'm actually pretty excited to read the third one. But one more thing. What is the deal with the names? Hush Hush, Crescendo. What did either of those have to do with the books? Anyways, I give Hush Hush two thumbs up. It's exciting, it's well written, it's pretty fun. But only read Crescendo if you are willing to be disappointed and then wait for the third book, which will probably be better. Because that's usually how YA authors do it. I'm gonna make a really good first book, then a really awful second book just to kill their spirits. And then aha, another surprise. Book three will be fantastic. I just want every book to be good. Is that so much to ask? So anyways, subscribe, comment, thumbs up if you've got your brains inside your head and you know that this is nothing like Twilight, and thumbs down if you like Patch's name. Okay, yeah, I know it's not his real name, but, I mean, come on. I would never let my friends call me Patch. Ever. It'd be like they were calling a dog.